It is Tuesday, 24th of May, 2022. It is 8.30 p.m. UK time and it is 12.30 p.m. PST, PDT time, because we're going to be heading to Portland, Oregon very shortly. Uh, this is all back to mine. This is one of my talk shows. In this talk show, uh, I talk to other DJs about their musical influences, uh, their careers, and then they get to pick out seven, sometimes more, of their choice sevens. Uh, and that can be a theme. It can be particular ones they've released. It can be ones they're affiliated with. It can be covers, French covers, whatever. We've had all sorts of things on this show. Uh, and then we talk about them. Uh, if you're watching this back on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. It's free. If you're watching it on Twitch, hit that follow button. If you're listening on Mixcloud, hit that follow button. It's all free and helps to support the channels. Right. So without further ado, my very special guest who's been a big inspiration this year for me in uh, me playing 45s at 33 and creating 33 day alongside 45 day uh is don champ sound there he is Hi. like i said on the show last night i need to get one of those buttons this isn't linked to serato yet <laughs> i need to get a button that sort of does the cheer and says yeah uh one day one day so um how you doing wonderful friend i wonder how are you it's uh i know it's, it's early ish uh over there for you so thank you for uh you know taking the time to sort of come in and and uh chat to us um we've got dj panda in the house already uh, big up. I'm, I'm trying to pull up the chat on the screen over here so anyway. <laughs> That's all right. Don't worry. Uh, I'll, obviously, I'll pull up the selected chat and stuff on on here. But uh, yeah, if you if you want to see the rest of it, that's all cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, you know, we we always I always start at the beginning. So uh, you know, musically, uh, what would you say were your sort of first musical influences? You know, when, when did you first realize what music was about and that it was as important as it is? I mean, I've been playing musical instruments since I was seven years old and my parents weren't into music but they realized i was and they didn't know how to deal with it so they would just buy okay. me an occasional instrument and then step off for a couple of years and see if i got into it there was a one or two failed experiments but then we landed on stringed instruments and you know i still play guitar and bass to this day but uh uh yeah they weren't really into music they didn't listen to music uh they're my parents are from colombia um but they're both okay. interesting characters they're not <laughs> into a lot of that stuff so i i pretty much grew up hearing whatever was on the radio in miami where i grew up and that's that's all i know that's all i knew until then that was your info yeah we had um miss soul turner on last week uh from colombia and she was telling us about how over in colombia the uh companies would give as a sort of christmas gift like a compilation of the the hits of the time to the workers as a sort of you know a, a little thing um but uh yeah no that's interesting so miami so what sort of music did you pick up there a lot of miami bass this was like you know i was born in the early 80s so this is the two live crew era the uh yeah. miami bass era the electro era this is a lot of the stuff i grew up on you know diamond girl is one of those songs stuck in my head from my childhood yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a classic so, so what age were you then with uh, listening to two live crew I mean, I was born in 84, so, you know, I pretty much grew up with all that coming up, you know, like when all that started coming up, I was just a little kid, and, and, and we, since I was on the, you know, we weren't in a great neighborhood, I grew up on the street, you know, so I was just listening to the cars get go boom and all that shit walking by, and it was the cocaine 80s, it was like a bad time in Miami. My parents yeah, yeah. are from Colombia, they did escape because of all that stuff. They came yeah, to the yeah. U.S. because because shit was wild. Or it was wild in Colombia. It was very wild. It's. I mean, it, it it's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because we only see, or certainly from 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 our point of view here, you know, we only see what what's depicted in the, um, in in things like narcos, narcos, I, I, and, and I, things I like that. I was that. waiting for that to come up. You know, <laughs> that, that that's that's the thing. That's what we see. And I was I was talking to uh, Miss Sol Turner about this last week. Um, and we have, I don't know if you know him, there's a guy called Ramesh Ranganathan, who's a, who's a comedian in the UK. Um, and he went to Colombia um, and he goes to various different countries. And the whole point was going to see, the, you know, what there was over and above this, what, you know, what the Western world thinks of Colombia. Um, but yeah, there's, there's obviously a, a whole other world <laughs> compared to that. Um, but yeah, it must have been pretty crazy, though, still back in, the, back in the early 80s when all of that was going on. 
and I was, yeah, we were going back and forth a lot. I, I was, uh, in the U.S., they call it an anchor baby, which means uh, two illegal immigrants have a baby in another country, and all of a sudden they get papers. So, uh, right, you know, okay. once I was born, my parents were able to start going back and forth, whereas before they had to, you know, make it over here and then see how long they could make it before they got shooed back over the border for a while off a of work visa or what have you. God, that's the tough life, though, isn't it? Really uh, no, tough. but I mean, it, it, I, you know, they're fine now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But we were coming back and forth, and I just I remember the huge differences. You know, you'd go down there, and the police officers would have AK-47s and camouflage on, as opposed to you know the ones here would just be regular police officers. And yeah, well, it, it's very weird. It's certainly in the UK, it's very weird because obviously, on the whole, police officers don't carry weapons. You only really see officers at, at airports, but you know, to see it on the streets when you go to to these different countries is very different. Um, I'm just gonna have a quick say hello to a few people. We got Twitch Witch in the house. Thank you for the bits. Much appreciated. Uh, Hamlandia as well, and uh, DJ Silent Disciple. You got a question? Is Martinez a real persona? I, I, I don't know. Probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, They're all based on someone, but all those stories are exaggerated and changed. I'm sure they are. Yeah. And Frosty Nugs as well. Uh, thank you, everyone. You know, if if you can and you'd like to, please host us. It'll be uh, it's going to be an interesting conversation. We're, we're only really just getting started, so hey, that's John. cool. Um, okay. Well, let. We'll come back to some chat in a minute, but you know, let, let, let's let's get some tunes because I, I want to see how many how many records we can get in. I know that the sort of brief is seven, um, but part of all back to mine is if I came to your house and you said I've got these sevens, I need to play you. You know, you've got to hear them, um, and so I get guests to sort of pick them out and then tell us obviously, you know, which one they chose, why they've chosen, uh, and go from there. So, so what have you got first for us? I, I know you were sort of up late last night picking some out. Big up to Beats United Radio as well. And um, thank you, Hamlandia, for the host. Skip forward in the story then. There's a there's you know, this is a there's a lot to this story, but like uh, I'll skip forward. There's a period of time we'll, and it's we'll, really when yeah, I we'll jump back and forth. When I uh I uh when I really, really learned production, hip hop, all this stuff is because I met some people that they saw more in me than I currently knew that I was capable of doing like they okay. they saw how quickly I could pick up their samples and spit them back to them and and, and show yeah. oh this is all you did like I just deconstruct their weeks worth of work in 10 minutes and just and they're like well, come on what what's going on and we these people rented a studio and it was an older gentleman who was a cable tv installation guy and I eventually found out that he was the lead singer and songwriter to a band called Freedom. I mean, Get up and dance, Freedom. Okay. That Freedom, like the, okay. the, the the freedom everyone knows. And yeah, yeah. So this is a uh, is just the old cat that used to come through, collect the rent. It was it, it was. It, I didn't realize until years later and after I was out of that place, all the different people I had met just walking through all the old blues artists that would just come and be like, oh, I left something here. People would walk through the door. We'd be working on something. An old man would knock on the door. He'd say, you're playing the keys wrong. Here's the chord or something. Just And I didn't <laughs> know I was so young and I didn't come from that. So uh, I guess I could play a Freedom song because, yeah. So this is uh, Can't You See by Freedom. It's less important about the song, more important that... This is a record I just found in a dusty corner of that studio and had no idea until years later that it's like a $200 rare record from some, you know, wow. crazy funk people. But uh, here we go.
was intending on playing the other side, but I like this song too. Double sided banger. Yeah, so that that's just a jumping forward in the story, but it's not that much further into the story actually. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it's all good. You know, I, I just wanted to hear some music because I'm 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 really intrigued at what you picked out. So, I thought Absolutely. I would jump forward a little bit. Um, so let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. So, um, obviously, you started playing uh, instruments, string instruments. You know, your parents got those. Um, and did did the sort of production side of things come first, or did the sort of DJing come first DJing for many years and it's actually I just remembered a story this morning that made me laugh so hard and it's going to make every DJ in the room cringe when they hear what I was doing but uh okay go on I was uh ready. there's a picture of uh, me as a kid circulating around Instagram recently wearing a Rage Against the Machine t-shirt I was obsessed with the guitarist Tom Morello and all the different yeah. sounds he was capable of making and and I remember the one there was a song where he was mimicking a turntable with his guitar um i think it was bulls on parade was the rage against the machine song he was yeah i, th I think mimicking I a scratch a, a scratch routine with a yeah. guitar and i had no idea what was going on uh and we found i was in a band and we played that type of music and we found like, an old turntable and like a trash can or just a dumpster somewhere we found a useless old turntable this was the late 90s no one cared about vinyl right then it was it was right when it was starting to die out and then like you, the hip-hop community and the house community were keeping it alive but aside from that you know everyone was buying cassettes and cds or so so we had a song and we're like we're gonna add a scratch routine we didn't know that scratching was picking a sound and manipulating the sound we thought that it was actually the needle going the wrong way on the record, scratching the record. <laughs> and okay. so we actually had, we would take it and we would just ruin the needle, just running it left and right over a record, just creating these just disgusting sounds. But that was my first time using a turntable to, to do something. And, and it wasn't until a few years later when someone gave me a turntable that and actually showed me and I met DJ friends and stuff that, that I was like, oh God, what was I doing? Oh no, what was that? But it worked, it made the sound that we wanted. <laughs> we just didn't well, know it's, how. It's, but yeah, but you made, you made a sound, didn't you? And you experimented. Um, we were talking last night, I had uh, Colonel MC on and he was talking about they were in a recording, recording with some um, rhymes and there was a cicada outside that was really loud. So rather than ignoring it, they went and sort of recorded that and then added that and had that as a sort of, you know, um, a snare sample on, on the top of it. But um, at the end of the day, you know, music's about experimenting, isn't it? And yeah, it's, it's a hilarious story, but, but it, it's good that you managed to get something out of it um, and create, create a sound. Yeah, so it wasn't until, it was a few years later, I met a group of drum and bass DJs that went to my high school. And so that's where I actually learned to what a turntable is, what a fader is, what a mixer is, yeah. the fact that you can change the pitch. And, and because, like I said, I'm, I'm really good at deconstructing things. Um, I can look at something and I can tell you all its individual parts really easily. And so it didn't take me very long to figure out the basic concept of beat matching in my head, even before I had my own equipment. You know, it's just the idea of this song's faster than that song and there's only so many possible drum combinations. So if we just match that to that i tried to do production then because i remember starting to hear loops and i'm yeah and then here i remember hearing like i remember one of the first things i tried chopping up was a king crimson song as i talked to the wind there was a flute loop and i was maybe 16 17 years old and i i heard it but then i i tried to get a copy of fruity loops i couldn't figure out fruity loops i tried to get a copy of reason i could not figure out reason i still don't know how to work like DAWs, I still buy hardware machines because yeah. it's just much easier for me. Um, and so that didn't work for years. But then uh, these drum and bass DJs, they showed me some stuff. And a few years later, another friend of mine, he was convinced that I was going to do this. And so he showed up to me. So somebody who was a few years older than me just showed up to my house with a pair of turntables and a janky mixer. And he was like, figure it out. And... I'm going to open a place and you're going to work there. And I was like, okay. I and mean, he passed away that year. So oh, that never went through. But 
I kept doing it and I kept doing it and I kept doing it. And I was, I, I, because I uh, wasn't in a scene, I didn't have a lot of DJ friends after high school, after those drum and bass people. It was mostly me going to thrift stores and buying records. It was never about doing parties. It was never about like stuff like that. It was more, I was looking for sounds. It was pre YouTube. It was pre Spotify. It was like, really hard to find music that you'd never heard and CDs were seventeen ninety nine, so it's not like I could go out and just buy 10 CDs looking for sounds, but I could go to thrift stores and spend $7 on 70 records. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and I assume you're buying not just, you're not just sevens, you're buying albums, 12s, everything. Yeah, everything, right everything, everything, everything and anything, tapes, <clears throat> you know, eight tracks, anything that had sounds, but, but yeah, for most part, 12 sevens, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, but it was again. It, it all came up as a search for sounds. It was always a search for for, for source material, and it kind of still, to me, my uh, record collecting is still kind of like that. I'm not a. I don't buy expensive records. I don't spend more than five dollars on any record. I don't. I. W I'm perfectly happy using Serato if it's gonna cost too much because to me it's not like it. This thing is important. It's a expensive important thing it's a it's just a way to make sound um, yeah yeah I definitely <clears throat> as, as as yeah it's an interesting concept isn't it so it, it's using the format as as sound rather than as a record or as part of a, a set or as part of something like that it's um yeah no that's very interesting um i'm gonna say hello to a couple more people because we have more people joining um we've got uh waxworks we've got uh dj shadowless spy happer uh barty cuts in the house we'll be talking about slow mo mondays in a little bit and uh constance k uh yeah welcome everyone welcome welcome thank you to those hosting already if you're not hosting hit that host button let's get as many people as here to check out these sounds as much as possible um okay before we, we do a little bit more about production let, let, let's go for your second seven what, what have you chosen for this one cool oh, cut so this is, Hello. yeah actually i'm gonna I, I had two and i'm changing my mind that's all right you can change your mind yeah yeah okay so this is right around that era i started moving around the country and i started working at a record store i wasn't djing in public yet i had only done one or two art gallery openings where people were just like no just play weird shit like just i don't care if you blend or people dance just just get out there and play those thrift store records for me. And so that's all I DJed before I left Miami. I was never, I never got the Miami club experience. I never got the Miami DJ experience, but I moved across the country. I ended up in Jackson, Mississippi at one point, And I got a job at a record store because I walked in and talked someone's ear off and they're like, you need a job. <laughs> and so it, that's the only way to get a job at a record store, by the way, everyone else, um, you don't, there's no resumes. You, you have to be a, you know, brought in by blood i guess i don't know but uh so here's uh some stuff this was in mississippi so it was a whole different world for me i'd never heard blues i'd never heard r b i never grew up around this stuff and i started finding these old r b and blues records that blew my mind and so here's a little beaver record joey one i found back then yeah. joey. whoops 33 that mistake almost
So that's a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful track. Yeah, this is one I've been carrying around for 20 years. It's it's one of the first first 45s I found that I was just mind blown by, and I was like, I've never heard of this person, I've never heard of this record label, I've never heard of this song, and there's music out there like this, and then that's when I started getting obsessed. <laughs> And it, and it, and it hasn't, it hasn't stopped, I imagine. It, do, it doesn't stop, does it? That's the... No, it, it, gets, yeah, it, it gets more obscure and it gets more difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll definitely come on to that. So uh, working in a record shop. So what, what record shop was it and um, how, how was that? It was amazing. It was an old, old record store that opened in the <laughs> early 70s called Bebop Records in Jackson, Mississippi. And I worked there right until it closed. Um, in 2010 and okay. it was started because some hippies threw a john fogarty concert and made so much money they had enough money to open a record store but wow the store was a hub for mississippi music uh, my co-worker and the person that hired me i found out eventually turned out like i found out had been the the tour dj for the rapper david banner for the last 20 years okay. and so wow he became someone that essentially took me under their wing and brought me to a venue, uh, showed me a place and, and, and owned by a jazz musician named Ezra Brown. And uh, a couple of weeks after me showing up to this venue in the spot, they were just like, okay, um, you want to show up with turntables next week? I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't do this. Like, I, I, you want me to play for people to dance? Um, and I didn't have as nearly as many records as I do now. And so many of them were, like I said, novelty records, sounds records, spoken words records, like just yeah. records that had goofy type covers that cost me 10 cents. Not, I wasn't looking for a lot of stuff. And, uh, and you know, I know this is something that's maybe taboo for this show, but it's also right around when a Serato was coming out. So <laughs> they no, set me up almost, with that, almost nothing. Almost nothing is to be on this show apart from showing nipples because Twitch will cut us off. But other than that, I think we can get away with most things. <laughs> but, I mean, that's they put me in that position, and they set yeah. me up with that, and they were like, all right, well, it's the same mechanics. Figure it out. And they put me in a venue, and they said, all right, now show up two days a week and figure it out. And I did. And that's that's what happened. <laughs> but, so let, let's, um, let's, just be, let's just be clear. Sorry. So uh, did you have a setup at home? Did you have a DJ setup at home? Or yeah, I had, I had my two Stantons turntables and my janky Behringer mixer and you know okay. that's so, what I so was you bringing were, to the place you're like a bedroom DJ and then it's suddenly like right you're gonna do it for people now yeah and it wasn't even my yeah, I was again this for the second time in my life because the yeah. first time someone gave me turntables they were like you need to figure this out and then now for a second time in my life there's someone saying all right uh, I know you don't do this but you're gonna do this now okay so can, it's can I just double check by, by this point you're not doing the scratching the needle across the record you've stopped doing that by this point <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah no that was only for a, a for one month uh until we figured that one out um <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um okay so how did that go how did that go obviously being being dumped in in into it and being told I, just just do I it i figured it out i, I figured yeah. it out I, I got obsessed i started buying records like a like a crazy person i mean i at one point in that era, I had 10 times more records than I do now just because I worked at the record store and I had to, yeah. when I moved across the country, I had to file my collection down because I moved 4,000 miles and, or 3,000 miles and it's just, it's a lot to bring 10,000 records with you across the country. So, <laughs> so I had way more vinyl um, by the time, what time, what year was this? By like 20 two thousand and five of six this is where we are right now so five oh six i had uh, ten thousand records at this house because they they paid us minimum wage at this store but the yeah the, the 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 thing was is if something came in you got to buy it straight from the person before the shop got their hands on it that was the other that was the other perk like they paid us dirt but the perk was we got to take everything for pennies that, yeah that was going to be my next question so you know so you got preferential rates because you'd buy it what so someone would come into the shop with a load of records and you'd get to buy it directly from that person if you wanted it and and because yeah. this was oh five oh six and there wasn't you know uh, if you didn't have the big thick record buying guide there still wasn't uh what pop psych or like discogs uh, archives of prices and all this stuff it still yeah, yeah. it was, wasn't out there and most people were just 
trying to get rid of a get box of in stuff. their garage for $20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a question from Hamlandia, so let's let's drop this in. It may, may be slightly out of time scale in terms of that, but um, how did you end up in Portland? Oh, that same record store when I was uh, when it closed down and a whole bunch of other things in my life were in uh, flux. Uh, I picked up and I wanted to go west and called different people I knew in different west cities, and I figured out that this was the cheapest one that was still cool. Uh, cost of living here is still lower than L.A., San Francisco, and Seattle, so... Cool. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, and so did you end up working in another record shop when you got there? No, no, no. Um, this same record store I was at, it, uh, I ended up, that's where I ended up meeting the people that got me into production because there was oh, okay. these uh, okay. cats that would come in, they would buy jazz records or R&B <laughs> records. And it, it was a small community. So you talk to everyone for a long time. Everyone that walked in, you talk to them for a half hour about shit or, you know, they'd, they'd come in and be like, Hey, you want to listen to my new stuff? And so They'd come in with a beat tape or something, and and, yeah. and then, and I would do things like, oh yeah, you bought that record last week. That's the second track on the B side of that Roy Ayers <laughs> thing you bought. And they'd be like, "What do you? Fuck you!" They they did get angry at me. They would get legitimately angry at me because like they'd come in two weeks later and they'd not only would I remember that they bought it, but I remember which you know it just to be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that's the drum break off the Eddie Harris." Yeah, you because cool. I really like that. And they're like, "Where are your beats?" It's like oh, I've never made one before. <laughs> And uh, so they lent me this exact MPC right. that is in front of me, this one with the multicolored pads uh, for a week. And they're like, take this home and then come back. And uh, one of the things I made ended up on an album that's still up on Spotify right now, like in that week. Wow. <clears throat> it was uh... unintentional. Like it was one of those things I didn't know I'd be good at. And it's still not, like I love doing it. And it's still not what defines me, but I'm, I just somehow got awkwardly good at doing it really quickly. Well, I guess, yeah, if you find something that you can use, in, and like you were saying, um, I, I've got an MPC one as well, and the, I struggle a little bit with the operating system and, and how to sort of make it work for me. But like you say, it's a, it, it can be a lot more straightforward than having a, a digital audio workstation, you know, Ableton, Reason, Cubase, whatever. Um, and, that, and that's cool. Um, I think you lined something up on that one or on the MPC, on the newer MPC. I think you were going to play something. I have, I have something off of both, actually. I have, I have an old thing from a 45 I sampled on here that I made in that era. And then I have something newer, but when we start talking about slower stuff, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're starting up fast, and we'll we'll get slow, we'll get slower as we go as we go on, uh, as it gets more later in the UK and and there. Uh, um, cool. Well, let's have some more music, definitely. Well, uh, you know, two classics already you've put on. I've loved them. So, so what have you got next? Uh, this is a Lattimore record, and this one is just one of those. I, I you know, like I was saying, little old ladies would come in and be like, "I have this box. I don't even have a record player anymore. I just need twenty dollars." Get Give me twenty dollars. I'd be like, absolutely, because I was pulling Seal Johnson, lad like I was pulling single records in those boxes that I would have paid twenty dollars for in those times. But yeah. uh, 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 so this one is a Lattimore record, and it eventually turned into a song for a rapper named Melafear. Oh God, that needle jumped off. Sorry. <laughs> I never loved the 
just just that opening loop sped up a tiny bit and then and then another part here just actual song that ended up on that album, but my computer's being slow. the song it's, I made, but it's it's eluding me right now. <coughs> it's always under pressure. We were talking about this earlier, weren't we? About <coughs> initially, I said to you, uh, "How about making a, a beat live on the show?" <coughs> and you were like, "Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but in in practice, it probably would be a bit boring for the uh, for the viewers." Um, but it's always when you're trying to find something when you're on a show, it's really hard. But uh, yeah. Uh, big up to Barty Cuts as well. We said hello, and a couple more people: will, Chris Wheatley, and who else? I think I think we've said hello to everyone. Constance K. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Actually, uh, we're just sort of getting going, really. Um, but yeah, no, that, I mean, lovely. That's a that's a beautiful track, and obviously, how you flipped that as well. Um, really I nice. It. I think I might have found it. <laughs> oh, if you've got it, yeah. If you if you found it, let's do it. What what did I say? That's what she said. to Constance K. <laughs> Uh, have I said something inappropriate? <laughs> uh, hey, Benny Goggs as well. And Fat Wax 45. Drop it. Drop it. That's what she said. <laughs> I found um, have we got it? I think you got it. Th and, and are we using Serato here? <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately. It's all good. Yeah, this one never got pressed on vinyl. There are a few things I have done that are pressed on vinyl, but this one didn't. Hey, uh, grew up with death and fear with failure, so I'm smashing success, living life legendarily. There's no bait in my breath till the soul beneath us. They parallel with the flesh. What I push through the speakers is nothing less than the best. The trial retrovails, my crew been through it. The funny part is through Twitch, I have met multiple people that have also worked with this same rapper out of Atlanta. Um, Dreddy Serious, Soul Rebel Syndicate, those kids uh, out of Atlanta, they, they heard this and they're like, is that Mel? That's Mel. Right. They're like, you, you did have a Mel record? Like, yeah. <laughs> strange, strange Twitch findings, but this is a rapper named Melafear from Atlanta. I did half of an album for him. It, it's so, a so that's small, the same. Yeah, I mean, it's a small world, isn't it? And, and especially with Twitch as well. It seems to be everyone who's done music or doing music or DJing seems to be getting up onto Twitch. So it's, it's, it's good that you're meeting up with people like that, but... <clears throat> that's brilliant. So we had the original record, we had your beat, and then we had the the record that it ended up on. That was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as as Cut Class says, he's coming on the show next Tuesday. <coughs> Ooh, um, nice. If I, you might, I don't know if you know him actually. You should check out some of the beats he does on Just Good Beats. Uh, I, I have, I have, ch I, I, I you have. Cut cool, Class cool, cool. On Instagram too. I thought you might have done, but he's coming on next week, so it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. Maybe, maybe Cut Class can do a new beat for us or something. Um. Cool. Okay, so you get given that MPC, and obviously you never give it back. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I ended up uh, inheriting fifty percent of that label over time because okay, it just ended up being that uh, they needed someone like me to do a lot of nerdy stuff that I knew how to do, and they didn't, and vice versa. Um, so yeah. Uh, this ended up being a rapper I ended up making four whole albums with. There's still there's another one half done. I just got it in the mail, uh, emailed to me like a 
three four weeks ago um i've been i've been i've been uh sneaking tracks from it on on the twitch every now and then but uh it's just someone i kept working with um and it was mainly it was just three of us it was me uh a rapper and a and uh our uh, manager best friend uh consigliere person and we ran this uh little mini label and just started doing stuff started doing stuff started doing stuff so and um, let me just be clear so <coughs> is is this in person or are you doing this sort of remotely are you sending beats to him and he's sending you rap no this was or? in mississippi this is Did why i it? ended up staying in mississippi i was only supposed okay. to be in mississippi for a few months and uh i am twitch which i am on Bandcamp, but not under my name um i'm under all my secret secret uh aliases <laughs> oh we'll get into that too because that's a whole nother story um yeah <laughs> uh so we might yeah, have to do a part two at, at this rate but yeah it's fine <laughs> we'll do a part two this but is why going. i stayed in mississippi just no, stop stop it I, I leaned against the button um uh so yeah i stayed in mississippi because we were doing this work and and that was it i just inherited half this label and started working that's when we get to the freedom place this is when they take me to their place and it's this little run down old building and it turns out it was it was Freedom Studio that they built with the money from Get Up and Dance, but they never made any more records, and so they they ended up just becoming regular folk with regular jobs that rented out that building. Wow, <clears throat> that's um yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, so where where are we at? I've, I've lost I've lost track of what year we're in. Are we 2010? You already oh, probably oh eight oh seven oh eight oh eight oh seven. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um. <laughs> And so by this point, are you, are you then uh, sort of back out DJing a bit yeah, more? Yeah, I never stopped by this DJing. Stage? It, this whole, the whole scene I was with, the rappers, they would go to this place on Sunday. It was the open mic, uh, Friday and Saturday. This was like the one spot in town that didn't play. Because, I mean, this is the, because it's the 06, 07, 08 era, it was very, very Lil Wayne coming in, a lot of all that stuff coming in. The South, Lil, you know, it was... It was changing. There wasn't a lot of people playing boom bap or or, or, or tribe records at a, right. at a club in 0, 07. Um, so this was the one spot in town. It was it was a big old building. It had three rooms. It was the reggae room, the dance room, and then there was me in this little side area, and I'd play anything from you know s samples. This is when I started getting into DJing samples of rap records too, like playing a lot of the because of, because of all my time at the record store because I knew all this stuff and I knew that a lot of people didn't know this stuff and who sampled wasn't out yet. And so it's a I could sit there and just play, you know, Donald Bird records or or just different things that were just loops that everyone knew and then people would be like, "Oh, wow, where did you find this?" Like, okay, and I didn't have to do all that fancy DJing, but I was still DJing three days a week, six hour shifts for at that point two years. So at that point I had put in hours. There's three days three days of six hour sets for two years. Like you'll you'll figure something out. Anyone. You put yeah. you put someone in front of people that long. It's it's that um, whole, you know, if you do something for ten thousand hours, you're a professional or whatever the whatever the phrase is. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, but no, I, I can I can only imagine what it was like because obviously you, you now you, you play a record that's been sampled by a hip hop, you know, everyone knows it is and it's getting repressed or, you know, people have got it already or who sampled. But, you know, back then that must have been amazing. You know, like you say, people have just been coming up to you constantly saying, you know, what the hell is this? Where did you get it from? You know, that's amazing. And as a DJ, that's that's what you want, isn't it? As a DJ, people to, in one okay. sense, enjoy yeah. what you're playing and come up to you and say, this music's cool. Yeah, I mean, at that point, yeah, this is what it still is for me. I still love playing stuff people haven't heard you know that's why that's why still you know you 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 show up to my channel you have no idea what i'm going to be playing and there's a chance you might not have heard it but i like it you know that's that's what it's all about. yeah and i mean <clears throat> yeah we'll, we'll pause there about twitch we'll come back to twitch in a minute uh we'll pause that in a minute but let, let's have another record let's have another record and then and then we'll we'll talk a little all bit right. about twitch let's see how about um here's one a lot of people here know but it's another one that ended up getting sampled on another record. And this was, this one, uh, I ran into Questlove in an elevator of a hotel in 2009. And I handed him a CD 
and one of the tracks sampled this song and i'm sure most people here have heard various samples of this song and it was just just it wasn't an exemplary flip it was just a flip it was a cool song but the rappers did a really great job and he ended up playing this song on his best of countdown on the giles peterson show that winter okay um, yeah and that kind of changed my life for a few years that kind of it, it it sent my life into a, a different orbit that it wasn't in at that point. I went from record store employee to someone that lived on a tour bus off of one song being played one time on one one place. And so here we go. <laughs> So yeah. there's that. Dope. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the echo by mistake. I meant bigger slipped. Uh dope. Absolutely dope. But yeah, that like, two amazing tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah again. <clears throat> uh yeah, a lot of love for that in the chat. And Shazam successful. Ooh, Nate found me. <laughs> Nate's been trying to find some of my uh various uh <laughs> projects over time uh, here wow. you go. Yeah. oh yeah. some of my chat regulars have gotten secrets off me now because of this Ooh. <laughs> that, i mean that's that's we, we've talked about this a little bit on the show before like in in, in the old days uh then obviously you know when hip-hop first started people would cover up the label so no one knew what it was now we with would Twitch, we would rip them off we'd put <clears> stickers <throat> over stuff because if i had something that that freaked out a room and no one else knew what it was that was mine it was that was job security but did you did you ever i don't know if anyone did this would, would you put fake stickers on would you put fake labels like with random or, or just shit stickers that were unrelated like like just stickers anything to cover it like not yeah, but yeah. no i would never fake i would never pull a sticker off another record <laughs> <laughs> groove groove the most still does it now of course uh, groove but the it, most it, is it, og though exactly exactly but it, it, it sort of moved on a little bit with with twitch isn't it because obviously with with now you know, with Shazam and generally people on Twitch, if you ask a track ID, most DJs will say, there you go, or hold it up or, or whatever, you know, because yeah, of sharing, exactly. sharing is caring uh, on Twitch. Um, but it's, you know, there's still some records you have to hold back, I think. But Shazam, Shazam did change that. I mean, I remember when Shazam came out is when I started changing my mind. It's like, all right, well, I guess now we have to change it to we give everyone the knowledge, see what they do with it and work off of their knowledge. You know, at this point, I'm like, I want to teach you all my secrets so I can see what you you do with them and then steal yeah. yours you know it's yeah it's a very different very different concept but but it's good that it's turning what could have been a negative into a positive definitely definitely and, and as waxwork says bounce off bounce off each other um 
yeah, that's, that would be brilliant. So let, let's let's talk about Twitch then. I think we might be, we might be jumping ahead a little bit, and we might we might go back and forth. But so we, we, when did you first find Twitch and start? Well, when did you first find Twitch? Were you a gamer before the the DJing on Twitch? So I was. Uh, I had a roommate. This is years later when I'm living here in Portland. Who would throw Street Fighter competitions? Okay. And when I moved here, I stopped DJing as often. I had a couple monthlies in tiny, tiny, dusty dive bars that would let me play whatever I want. And uh, and I kept those, but this city is notorious for underpaying DJs unless you're playing top 40 at one of the three spots downtown because it's such a nerdy music town that everybody and their mom has records and everyone's down to play them for a $40 bar tab all night. Right. Like everyone's okay. like, Oh, you're going to give me $40 with a free beer to go to a bar and play my own records. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, uh, so I stopped being a professional DJ when I got here and I would do favors. I had friends that were artists. I would do their openings. I had friends and I still do like someone who's, I started doing all their art for is st- the person that designed all my Twitch overlays and all my emotes and stickers. And I, just because I was DJing all their art openings before they became a brand. Um, but so uh, at the Street Fighter tournaments, he, there were bars and he'd be like, you want to come play records? I'll split the, I'll split what we make with you. I was like, sure. You know, I'll, I'll come. And this was when Twitch was still Justin.tv. This is uh, before it changed names to Twitch before, before, uh, you know, Bezos bought it and before all that stuff. And so I've been in the, background corner of a twitch stream for seven years but wow i didn't get my own channel until about 14 months ago um so i knew the culture i'd i'd done like color commentary as like a you know like just silly commentary on a microphone over stuff i dj i knew how it worked i i knew the mechanics of it i knew how to set up obs but but uh but yeah, it's been a long time that I've actually been on this. I'm, I don't personally play a lot of video games, but I have a lot of friends that do. And so were you, so you were involved in the chat as well. So you, you, you involved in the community um, before, obviously, you got your own channel. But I, I didn't know there was music stuff until the pandemic, until, tw- you know, 2021 is late 20, you know, 2020, 2021, that time I was, uh, no, it's 2020, yeah. Uh, 2020. I didn't really know there was music stuff going on on it until I, uh, until I started hearing about people getting kicked off Instagram Live and Facebook for the, uh, because of the bots. And then I, I, you know, my friend was like, yo, I think something's happening with Twitch. There's music stuff going on. You should look into it. And I, and I started looking into it and I found a few people like I think I found Northern Crates and I yeah, found yeah. a few other cats that were like, yo, what are you, yo, this is super cool. Like, like it's not just, uh, you know, somebody's $200 Pioneer controller and a pink neon light, like playing trance, like, and <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. There's still, some that. Like that. There's still <laughs> wonderful things like that. There are amazing yeah. DJs that do that, but I thought that that's all it was. You know, I didn't know that there was, there's, people like you interviewing people about their history with records or I didn't know that you know I'd run into various legends like I, I, you know Francois K or like new you know old people new people like you know just popping into Jelly Bean Benitez's stream like that's mind blowing yeah it's crazy isn't it um and you know one of, one of our good friends Sam tweaks like Devin Morales you know he's you know he played on the Sunday mass and that uh Groove has got a question does anyone remember Chu TV. I do not. No, I, I don't. I, it's a bit before my time. Um, interesting. King Taco mentioned this. Uh, I think when we had Sweet Tooth on the other week, and he said Twitch didn't have other categories until relatively recently. Um, back before IRL and all those came out, people used to get banned from Twitch for not playing a game on their stream. Now that that's that's really interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah. No, that's very cool. It's very cool. Um, and what's Chris Wheatley say? Oh, here we go. Chris Wheatley knows. He knew a few folks who streamed on Chew and Waxworks used it for a while. Pretty good, but swallowed up by the big boys. So that's fine. Um, okay, let, let's pause the chat on Twitch there. Let's have another, let's have another record. Because I know, you, I know oh. you've got a few. I, I, I know you've got a few. So, yeah, you know, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd quite like to get through as many as, as you've got. 
Well, that could I mean, I, I pulled more than I know I'm going to play because I also didn't know what I was going to play because I didn't know where the conversation yeah, yeah. was going. But uh, um, I guess I will play one from one of my life inspirations at this point because I have I've always I like I said I, I, making rap beats is fun and I love it and it grew to be a passion of mine, but it never was the thing I thought I wanted to do or knew I was going to do until. It still isn't. There's still a million other things I want to do. And uh, Madlib is, he does so many things. And he's, you know, even at his age, he's putting out so many records and so many different genres and everything from the Yesterday's New Quintet stuff to everywhere. And so uh, I got this Madlib 45 because he's like one of my life heroes in music, you know, just being so prolific and so shameless like doing anything like i'm gonna do this one thing and i'm gonna do something completely different it's gonna alienate all my fans just because it's what i want to do like uh, i think this is the right song is it this one no no it's the other side yeah i'm slow it's okay don't worry it's early for me i normally this is normally when i wake up everyone so i'm sorry the the next one we do we'll do it even later good woman to make you a better man Right, that's why I say good woman to make you a better man. Problem is, good women ain't my type. Clear, clear, Madlib is actually so it's because of Madlib that I started getting into a lot of world stuff and a lot of uh, like Madlib it, his beat conductor tapes is beat conductor yeah. in Africa beat conductor in India all these yeah 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 all his different sample tapes that's what got me into looking up Turkish funk or you know Italo disco or all these like or even uh, his early early uh, he had a brazilian mixtape of yeah that's right there was so much music i i didn't didn't know again you know i didn't know about any of this stuff except for through looking up samples and like trying to find them and asking people or like reading credits like who did they pay like what what publishing company is this and then doing the research at the record store and then i'm just realizing that there's this entire world of music and that the u.s is tiny and pathetic in the grand scope of what's available and you know because I, I mean it's i don't know if it happens there in the uk but they make you think here that you're, it's the center of the universe um, um <laughs> I, 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 uh, I know that that used to be the sun never sets on the british empire type mentality yeah, but, but <laughs> it, it's very it's a very tricky one at the moment because of this sort of brexit and I think they thought, you know, we're we're amazing, we're better than the rest of the world, we can go it alone and we can do this, and it's not quite working out as people thought, uh, unsurprisingly. Um, but I, I think we're 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 very we are very multicultural uh in a lot of a lot of the UK. Um so there is a lot of different styles of music and, and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, I mean I, I don't know, I, we don't think that and and there's a lot of you know, my, my parents emigrated to uh, the UK, as did my wife. So, you know, so we're sort of first generation immigrants, you know, second generation immigrants, however it's put. Um, so we sort of feel like we're from here, but also don't, if if you know what I mean. You know, it's sort of that. So, um, but yeah, no, like like you, I I I love world music, and you know, it's just finding samples and and because we're not just one country, and, and it's all different rhythms and different styles and different you know beats, and and it's it's one of the reasons I, I really love Twitch because. I've got to meet so many DJs from around the world, you know, Japanese DJs, Brazilian DJs, and, and, you know, I love Brazilian music, and hearing the Brazilian DJs playing the Brazilian music is like, wow, you're never going to hear this unless you go to Brazil 
Um, and, and that's been a, a, amazing, you know. Yeah, for so, so many years, I just knew, you know, Arthur Verisai, Joao Donato, and Os Mutantes. And I thought, oh, that's everything. And now it's like, wow, okay, that's just the very, very tip, tip, tip yeah. of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's, it's a bit like, um, I suppose for us in the UK, if, when you see collections in America or you see record sellers and you just see vast warehouses of 45s, funk 45s, you know, from Texas 45s and, and whatever, you know, and, you know, there's just stuff that we're never going to hear. Um, but equally, each country has their own whole sets and, and artists who maybe put out one record or, you know, 145 or one album that was dope and someone has to come and pick it up like Giles Peterson or Madlib or some big producer. And then suddenly you're like, wow, this artist is amazing. You know, it's... the U.S. is so big that that happens to me in just cities. I was in yeah. Chicago just last week and I spent an exorbitant amount of money on records and it wasn't expensive records. It yeah. was take um take an artist like like for example Leroy Hudson um if I'm on the west coast I always see two of his albums and then if I'm on the east coast there's always a different two of his albums that I see and then this time I was in Chicago and it's like I see the one I've never seen anywhere else and it was only six bucks it wasn't like a, a rare it wasn't off the wall it wasn't anything but it's the same goes with like I, it was a uh, Gary Burton or, or so just different musicians or, or, or stuff like there's stuff I see in New York at every store. And then there's stuff I see in Portland at every store. And then when I was in Chicago, I was seeing stuff I'd never see at any of those other cities, but still not overpriced. It's just, this is what was popular maybe then. And, and maybe there was a local radio station that overplayed it. So they sold a bunch of copies in just that city. Um, That's crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. It's, it's a bit weird. Like we were talking, uh, uh, yeah, Miss Soul Turner was on the show last week, and one of the tracks she played was uh, Gimme Gimme by ABBA. And for her, she had to get it flown in from Barcelona or something because they didn't have it. And I was like, you can go to any charity shop in the UK and, you know, you'll find two, three copies of it. You know, and it's just one of those records that in, in a different country has different meaning and a different value than it would. Like here in Portland, like I'm here. swimming in new shoes 45s. Yeah. You can because New Shoes is a local band. You can go to any thrift or consignment store and find every New Shoes forty five. And and that that's the beauty of going somewhere else, isn't it? And as a record collector or, or a vinyl addict, you know, going to a city, the first thing you do is right. What record shops are there? Where am I going to go? Where am I going to start? You know, and it's it's part of the fun. You know, it's part of the fun seeing Absolutely. what you can find, and especially record shops that aren't necessarily on Discogs or necessarily online. Because then you really don't know what you're going to find, um, and that, that's that's a lot of fun. I found one in sort of uh, near London the other week, and again I was like, Are "You on Discogs?" He's like, "No, no, I can't be bothered. You know, I've got enough customers coming in buying my stuff. I don't want to bother with that online stuff." And I just found stuff that I hadn't found before. It was brilliant. Yeah, that's what really I good. found one in Chicago just last week. That's uh, some just a person's personal collection. They're only open Saturday and Sunday for four hours each day, and every single record on the shelf was good and nothing was overpriced and they had their dollar bin was super interesting in that it was all 40 dollar records in f grade shape so it's like if you really right. really wanted that one super rare but hey maybe only one song will play without <laughs> skipping here it is for a dollar like but everything was good everything yeah. and they're not online Definitely, definitely. Um, let's have another record. Let's have another record, and, th and then we'll, we'll go back to Twitch. Uh, Groove Demise is saying, in Philly, the suburbs is a hotbed. All right. uh, what are we going to play? I can imagine. How about a um, th Once again, thank you to everyone for tuning in. We're, we're about an hour in. Um, we've probably got another hour. We'll see. And But at, th at, this, at this rate, I think we're going to probably do a part two at some point. Um, <laughs> there was some other, some other ideas, but yeah. Anyway, what you got? Yeah, pan, uh, real quick, Panda, if you ever end up in Chicago, Interstellar Space Records, that was that place I found. Thank you. 
this copy has a uh, it's gonna start looping <laughs> We'll stop it there because it always does this thing. Um, a, a couple of things that came out of that. I, I I don't know if he did, but uh, Kenny Everett does that. Does that name mean anything to you? Nope. He, he was a all. UK, like, oh, I don't know, comedian. I guess uh, he used to have a show back in the must be eighties, I think. Best possible taste is Waxwork says. Anyway, um, Double P used to think he played this. So <clears throat> my sort of uh introduction to 33 slam i can't remember exactly who it was but it was a, f a couple of years ago and it, it might have been greg belson doing a mix and then i i did a, a seven by seven which was at the wrong speed <clears throat> and then when i sort of got back into it and was chatting to sam tweaks about he played something and he told me about popcorn he said that's the track you have to get and you have to play that at 33 uh and then sort of juggle it up um and then obviously we then uh, started watching your stream and then we got involved in playing 33s on 33 Raiders and, but you've been doing it a long long time for us and then we did 33 day um, Hamlandia goodbye and thanks for joining us and yes we, we'll definitely do a, a, a part two but let, let, let's let's go on to 33s so when when did you first start getting into it and and why first of I, all well, so back to that same record store because we were in the south um, it was that you know screw tapes I, I i grew up in the deep south screw tapes were a thing dj screw released hundreds and hundreds of tapes along with you know michael watts og ron c there's a bunch of djs and i actually pulled up a bunch of history on that um if we want to really dive deep into it but uh i just it was just a thing that was around and in both directions, actually. In Miami, there was a different scene where they would speed up the rap records. And I remember as a kid, they, you know, people trying to sell me tapes and they'd say, hey, do you like fast music? That's that's essentially how they would try and sell you the tapes and they'd speed right. the stuff up. So then uh, we would sell screw tapes at this record store and it just became something that I became comfortable with and familiar with. And one of our other employees, that was his, that was his thing. It's, he was a Texas rap nerd to the highest degree that you could ever like he owned so many original you know screw cassettes and screw cds that he just, it was his like pride and joy is just collecting dj screw related stuff uh he was from houston and uh yeah so it was i mean and screw didn't play music slow screw would record mixes and then slow them down after um okay all right so screw because so he would what record it uh was using he was using cassettes back then yeah he was using the the old four track 100 minute max you know the four track cassette mixer and then record the whole mix and turn it down and then record it onto another tape okay the screw wasn't actually playing the record slow he was making the mixes for people then slowing it down okay but, that's interesting yeah and i pulled it up that um i found i knew that there was a some people before him there's a couple theories one is that um okay so cumbia in colombia was taken on in northern mexico in the region of monterrey they really really liked colombian music and culture and there was like a whole culture of people called colombianitos which are people that would dress like colombians act like colombians talk like colombians listen to colombian music it was just like a hey we like this other culture scene um, Sorry, hold on. So, so they're not Colombians. No, so this is in Mon in northern Mexico in the okay, area. Okay, so, Me so Mexican people would dress as Colombians. Yeah, okay. they would just take and on the culture and they would call okay, themselves okay. Colombianitos, which are like little Colombians, I guess. I don't know why. I don't know the history of it, but yeah, yeah. There's a story, and let me see. Let me get the exact. There's a story that in the early 90s or was it the late 80s there was a uh, you know like a sound system like the, the, the like ones you're familiar with in 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 reggae culture you know okay, just street parties yeah. with djs and it looks like in 
like in the early 90s, there was apparently an amp that overdrew a circuit and it caused the turntables to lose voltage to where they were playing low. Right. And yeah, and people were freaking out and they were like, yo, can you give me that version? And then people came back the next week and they were asking for the Rewaha version, which means the lowered version. That's what they started calling it. They called, started calling it lowered cumbia, like cumbia Rewaha. And yeah. it became a thing and it just did. It still is to this day, and actually Mexican cumbia is way slower, darker, and bassier than Colombian cumbia, partially because this happened. Um, I'm trying to find I, the name I of the I remember you DJ. mentioned this because uh, I think, it, I can't remember if it's a 33 day or on 33 radios, but I, I played some sort of Latin or, or you know, some salsa or something like that at 33, and then you said, you, you said, you mentioned this, you said about that there was a whole culture about playing records at, uh, at 33 like cumbia slowed down oh and there's another theory too and i i did look in uh, barty cuts was the first one to mention it to me but i looked into it and if i mean rock steady is just slow ska so there's a yeah, whole other yeah. theory that the yeah. whole well there is the original story of of uh of the first uh rock steady records being the the, the the record producer claims that they were recording a ska song and uh, they told him, no, 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 play everything the same, but just play it way slower. But there's a whole nother theory that cats would be buying ska 45s, putting them on their tables and forgetting to switch it to 45 and putting it on. And you got a rock steady song. <laughs> it, there really uh... is very little difference between a ska song on 33 than a rock steady song. I'd say it from yeah, the... yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. Um... I think wow, we just had a raid. We just had a raid from Northern Crates. Oh, wow. Northern Crates. Big up. We were talking about you earlier on, actually. Much respect. Yeah. Much respect. Uh, welcome, we just, Raiders. Welcome, Raiders. We were Raiders. talking about how Northern Crates was one of the first DJs I saw on Twitch that made me yeah, be like, whoa, that's amazing. I can do this. And look, look at all this family coming in. We've got Nat Jacko, Sleet Stack, Mr. Pate Mix, Johannes Mudatsos, uh, Davatronic. Everyone, brilliant, brilliant. Thank you very much. We're, we're about an hour into the show, but I'm sure we've got at least another hour or so. Um, and DJ Sweet Tooth as well. He was on last week. Big up, big up. DJ Sweet Tooth, you questioned whether Don would be up in time for the show, and he is here. Uh, we've got Jazz Nasty as well, and D Rosie. Wow, everyone's, everyone, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for jumping in. Uh, if you're new here, hit that follow button. If you'd like to host, then host us, and uh, local host as well. We had got to the point where we were talking about 45s at 33 and um, some theories about the cumbia um, and it being played slowly. So let's just go back a tiny bit to that bit. So you said that the amp was overriding the system and making the voltage go down on, on the turntables. Yeah, that's one so, of the stories. Is that, yeah, So that's one of the stories. So I assume did that happen just once <laughs> and then it, it happened once and then people kept asking yeah but then there's yeah. there's a bunch of stories of a bunch of djs putting on a, a 12 inch that was 45 at 33 by mistake and pushing play and the people in the crowd freaking out like there's there's that's not it's not the first time you know no one invented that like it it's yeah it's it it's a mistake that's probably happened a thousand times and created a thousand like beautiful you know unexpected things but uh but so yeah, they, they, there's that story there, and then there's again there was the the ska 45s at 33 being yeah. rock steady. But then there's I, when I was digging last night, I found a story of another Houston DJ from a, like 1977. His name was his name was Daryl Scott. And uh, he would run, he started releasing mixtapes called Eight on the Double and 33 and a Third that were, okay, had the first stuttering, you know, doubled of the same clap, clap, you know, the snare, and it had the first 45s at 33. And he, it looks like the first cuts he ever slowed down were uh, Mantronics as Fresh as the Word and White Horse by Laid Back. Um, and it was again all mistakes he'd put them on and the crowd would freak out so he was doing that so yeah when it comes to the slow stuff i mean they they don't know if screw got it from the mexican community in houston they don't know if screw got it from ray price they don't know if you know and and and, and 
also the dates on the cumbia stuff might be earlier, might be later. So it's there's still no set who did this first. But it all seems to come from a similar region. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean it 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 it's crazy because you know if that's right, that's nineteen seventy seven. That that guy from Houston. Yeah, it looks like that's when he started doing it with the Gap Band. Um, so was was the Mexican slow down cumbia? They're saying that, that was nine ninety one, but it could be earlier. You know, ninety one is just that's the guy who claims he did it the first time, but. Yeah. I mean, if, never, if, it, you know, if it is 77, I mean, that's like 40 odd years. You know, that is, that is crazy. And, um, and let me see, there was another person I found even earlier. It was an Italian DJ, but I don't know where that link is. <laughs> if you're just tuning in, we're, we're, we're doing a little bit of a, a research lecture on playing 45s at 33. And where they ah, came there from. we go. Belgian newbie started in the 70s. Okay, uh, this is what I found last night. Um, Belgian had a popcorn scene in the 70s where DJs played rhythm and blues, soul, jazz, Latin, and rock and roll records radically pitch adjusted. So, and then um, it turns out there was a bunch of DJs, uh, one DJ Dikarani, um, and he would play his 45s at 33 plus 8 at every set. And this okay. is mid seventies in Belgium. Like this is it's it's just popping up all over the place <laughs> in different ways. Interesting how that, that sort of links in popcorn and, and obviously the last track you played as well being popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can't write this stuff. Um, right, let, let's let's take a pause from the uh, from the thirty three research and let's have another record because this is all back to mind. I, I've I've got no idea how many you played. Maybe. Six, seven, but I, it doesn't I really know, matter. But how about one of my favorite ones to play at thirty-three? That's yeah. Let's fun. let's let's do that. <laughs> okay, and and a quick question. So when when you're playing them at thirty-three, are are you being pure and playing them at thirty-three, or does each one do you decide it's going to be plus one, plus two, plus six, it, plus eight? Depends you know, on the record. Uh, it depends on the record, but most of them end up sounding muddy. Uh, if you actually pure 33 them so yeah, i end yeah. up like 33 plus four or so but there are some that you can pull off 33 minus eight and they still sound wonderful oh, yeah. um, well cut, cut class is saying you went to a crazy bar where people playing rock and roll 45s pitched up 10 percent um, oh yeah there's that whole um that's another scene that's yeah that's uh nightcore <laughs> 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 nightcore they call it and I mean, it goes faster and faster and faster yeah it's <laughs> Okay, let's let's hear it. Let's hear our first forty-five at thirty-three. There's a Rose Royce song, "Love Don't Live Here Anymore." You abandon me Love don't live here anymore Doesn't even sound slow down No Just a vacancy Love don't live here anymore When you lived inside of me There was nothing I could conceive That you wouldn't do for me You change that right away, baby. You abandon me. Love don't live here anymore. Just a vacancy. Love don't live here anymore. Just emptiness and memories of 
place to stay. Cruise knows. Never home. You've abandoned me. Love don't live here anymore. I just realized I never answered the question of how I started playing shit slow. But uh um the it, again, it goes back to the sampling thing. It goes back to, I'm listening to something, I hear this loop, let me play it at every possible seat, speed until it sounds right. And a lot of times it was turning it down in the drum machine, but then I found myself doing it every single time. I found myself recording something off a record, putting it in the drum machine, and the first thing I'm doing is pitching it down as low as I can and then going up slowly until it sounds right. It's just something my head started doing. And I didn't DJ like slowed down music. I, I learned how to do basic chopping and screwing when I was in the South, but it wasn't ever anything I did. It wasn't like a fun thing for, like it was, I mean, it was fun, but it wasn't ever like a thing I was known for, or did or went out and, and it wasn't till Twitch and I don't know why. I really don't know why, but one of my first, I, before I jumped on Twitch, I spent a month uh, just researching intensely because I was, you know, we were all locked up in the house. I didn't have a job at the time. So I just spent, Morning to night, writing notes, making mental notes, seeing who's doing what, what's available, what's everything sound like, what looks like, who has what show. And I realized I did not see a single person messing with the concept of altering speed. I, I mean, I eventually found a few people, but I had, I, that first month I just looked around, I didn't find a single person doing it. Since then, I've found that various other twitch djs like a holiday special had a radio show where they did it um you know Barty has done it in clubs many times uh, and all these different things but it was mainly the reason i started doing it is because i just wanted to try it and no one was doing it and it I, that was it it's it, it, it's not anything i did until twitch let, let me pause you there let me take you back a, a tiny bit um you said obviously you'd record it into the uh, beat machine, the MPC, uh, or whatever it was first, and then you'd sort of do that. Does it does it sound different when you're changing the pitch in the MPC as opposed to changing it on the turntable? Absolutely, it's uh, it, so it gets like the a digital grain. Turn turntables better, or do you prefer the digital griminess? I kind of prefer the digital grime because it's uh, the other thing is that it keeps it in key too. So if you record yeah. it pitch locked and then just go down full steps with the machine then you can still jump on a keyboard or a guitar and still be in actual tune with other things instead of having to you know detune everything by a quarter step because you know the numbers on the 1200 aren't exactly one percent or two percent or three percent uh, so yeah, that's yeah. the other reason why it ended up being in the machine as opposed to just recording it slow um yeah, yeah. I mean, they used to record it, so uh, actually used to, that used to be a tactic um, that was used in earlier drum machines like the SP-1200 where they only had 10 seconds of time. And so, because you only get 10 seconds of time, or yeah, the S-900, like Waxworks said, you put it in there and you get 10 seconds, but if you pitch it down way low, that 10 seconds turns into 30 seconds. Um, yeah. So... That's, because that's, the machine still only sees it as 10 seconds of information. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Jazz Nasty says that Chris International and Best Patrician were doing fancy molasses in Ottawa uh, by 2020, 2012, which was uh, slow nights there. Yeah, um, yeah. and they have both since been Slow Mo Monday guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And actually, yeah, Chris, Chris International played on uh, 33 days, well, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, and then here we go, another tactic. Waxwork says mono to get more out of the uh, the sampler. Yep, yep, yep. And Groove Demo said they used to speed it up on the uh, SP12. So we're getting proper nerdy here with uh, beat machines. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, right. So coming back um, to Twitch, obviously. So you you do your research. You you, you see what's going on. Uh, you see that that stage is not many. Well, very few, if any people that you'd found who were doing it um d did you did you, uh, I, I i didn't see your very first stream so i don't know was your first stream a, a slow-mo uh no 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 um i think my f I mean, my first slow stream was all serato just chopping and screwing boom back because okay. that was the thing 
that I used to do for fun in the South is because, yes, I was in the South, but I was playing at the only spot that wasn't Southern music heavy. I was playing at the spot that was playing the, the, the New York stuff and the Chicago stuff, not the Southern stuff. And so I would occasionally, out of silliness, just mess around with the idea of, you know, chopping and screwing a tribe called Quest Song, just because, I, you know, learning techniques. I like learning techniques. Yeah. I like learning new things. Um, and so when I jumped on, I, I think it was just, I was just messing around and I did it and people were like, yo, you're chopping and screwing stuff. I was like, I guess, I, I, I guess. I mean, I'm, uh, but I think the first, it was my birthday last year. I don't, I had just decided for some reason to get um, not sober and play a bunch of music really slow because it felt better that way. And I did like 10 hours, I think that day of, 45s at 33 just all day long and i think i'm pretty sure northern crates rated that day too <laughs> big up northern crates it's, it's great to see him back because i think he's only just recently uh, set I believe up again, today was he? the first or second stream yeah, yeah yeah so it's great to see you back great to see you back um and so it went from there then so that that was and then yeah, and then, then after that then people slow -mo showed Mondays. Me Barty. yeah people showed me Barty and Barty. For a while, we had a different idea, which was we were going to try to get someone to play slow music on every day of the week because he was doing slow down Sundays. Okay. And I can't remember what day of the week I was doing then, but we eventually decided, well, we can't find seven people to play slow music every day. <laughs> like we found people that were willing to do it once every now and then, but we couldn't find anyone that was like, yeah, let me do this every single week. <laughs> and for me, like, again, for me, it's still also it's searching for samples still. I, I'm doing double duty. I'm, I'm getting to listen to yeah, stuff yeah. in a different way and maybe hearing something, you know, separate from it. And um, so it's, it's, it is double duty at that point, but yeah, we found each other and it was, we just decided, Hey, let's, let's see how long we can get this going. I had no idea it would go this long. I thought it would be done after a few weeks. I, I almost <laughs> quit a few times too. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit like that with Twitch, isn't it? You just don't know where it's going to take you and, I guess once you get past a certain point, you've got to continue. Well, you know, once you get to like seven or eight months, you're like, oh, we've got to continue till at least 12 months. Uh, or, you know, you get to show 20 or something, and you're like, oh, we've got to carry on to at least show 50 or something. It's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, we'll come back to Slow Man Mondays in a minute. Um, what have you got? I can see you've got something lined up. Well, is this another 45 at 33? Yeah, well, it's. Uh, I was going to show you the slowing it down in the machine versus the not slowing it down in the do machine. Do it. There you go. Situation. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. So this is uh, Larry Carlton's cover of Son of a Preacher Man. This is something I did recently, but uh, since I got this new thing. But uh, the original is just a... Uh... <laughs> So, I mean, that's, I'm not going to play the whole song just because we're going to talk about it, but that's the, the loop that I ended up chopping and re, re, I'll show you in a second, but this is just the same loop played at 33. And then here we have the same loop recorded in faster but then slowed down and you can hear that it, it gets the bass starts warbling it starts getting muffly and then there's stuff happens to the snare drum where it just it just gets this nasty to it and it's just um oh yeah hold on it's that So, I mean, it's just playing with like. All that is nice. is taking that. If, if you take the first note off of it, that part off of each bar, it stops sounding like son of a preacher man so if you just play yeah. the, the second third and fourth note of each bar in different patterns it turns into a it's 
So yeah, I mean, it, it does sound different. It is a little different. With the newer machines, it, it sounds a lot less grainy than it would have with, with this other one, but uh, just because they're, they're just so much better at machines. But, uh, and that's, but yeah. uh, I think you said MPC Live 2. Is that right? Yeah, this is the newest. I, mean, I just, just, just got this thing uh, in the last two months. That's, you know, I've maybe only done five or six things on it, and that's one of them. But uh, yeah, I need yeah. to sit down with it more. <laughs> There you go. Twitch, I stream too much. Sucks. I don't give myself time. I stream too much. <laughs> it's it's addictive, isn't it? Streaming's addictive. That's that's the that's the problem. Well, also, it's my only form of income right now. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> uh, hits from the bong as Twitch which slapped it says, uh, "Yeah, that's that's cool." Uh, okay, so slow mo Mondays. Um, you started that with Barty Cats, and 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 like, you've got plenty of guests, haven't you? You've had guests come on. Yeah, at this point we've had, uh, it's been over a year. We were going to do a, an event at the year mark, but me and Barty are both the least organized human beings in the world. Did you forget? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, I, we did that with some, I can't remember, one of our shows we forgot. I think, I think yeah, 45 Raiders with Sam. It sort of came and went, and then about three months later we're like, oh, shit, we missed, we missed the one-year anniversary. Uh, but, yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, no, I mean, but that's that's I guess, but that's both of our styles, though. Like we're we're the type of person that like I never know what song I'm playing until the song I'm playing. Like, uh, you know, yeah. if, if you watch me closely, sometimes you'll see me pull four records off the shelf while I'm playing something because it's just like I don't know what I'm playing. Am I playing this? And then just, no, it doesn't sound right. And I'll quickly grab. I I don't do lists. That's why I don't do. That's why I don't have mixes up. I don't. I've never been a, a someone that like can plan out a whole hour because like i don't even know how i'm going to feel in 10 minutes much less a room much less anything like uh i'm very much seat of my pants type of person flying flying by the moment so um but that, sorry, that's good yeah yeah i mean I'm, I'm i'm a bit like that as well you know i might pick out the first track or the you know maybe two tracks that i'm going to start uh, a stream with but then it's just a case of just dragging whatever comes out or and as you say, you know, going flicking through a few and then thinking, okay, your brain making that connection. Yeah, that works and that links to that and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it sounds like fat wax. That's exactly what he does pretty much every set. Um, you know, and he kills it every set. Um, okay, so who, who have you had on? Who have you had in terms of guests on Slow Mo Mondays? Uh, I mean, there's at least six people in this chat that have been on, I think. Uh... I mean, our next week's guest is right there in the chat, Soko Nate. But we've had people like Bill BH. We've had big DJs like DJ Flipout on. Um, had, <laughs> he, uh, did, he did. Uh, he did. He did thirty three Raiders, didn't he? And I think he did a. He he he'd come off the back of a Beatles, three or four yes, hour Beatles I remember, stream, I, and I then went, he just I think did. I was on after him. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then we, yeah, we went back to you. I think. Did we go back to you? Or, I can't remember. But he did like a whole. Beatles 33 set, which was <laughs> some was good, some was not quite so good. Spy Hopper, I, I do have to say something about his chat comment really quickly. Um, yeah, the I learned to DJ is the last, last, last generation of person that had to carry other people's records to go to the bigger gigs and stuff. And that the DJ I used to help out with the same person i told you was david banner's tour dj that i worked with at that record story right. every time he had a big gig he would be like you're, you're carrying my records but i'm taking you to the big gig and you're going to stand in the booth with me and see what it's like to you know do all these different things and and that's the thing is he would fill a van with crates of records so i would it would be like a four-hour thing and i'd be pulling out 14 15 just crates of records <laughs> and stacking them up next to him in this big wall but that's that's the people i learned from yes by yeah. exactly um, I guess with 33s, uh, playing a 33s, that, that cuts down the amount of records you'd have to take out if you were going to play out at a live thing. Yeah, I, it, yeah, we, we um, I mean, it was a lot of 12 inches, but all of our 12 inches are played at 33. All of all the UK yeah. 12 inches are pressed at 45, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but exactly. I mean, I was still doing seven. I mean, I, again, I've been collecting 45s for a long time. This was, uh, it wasn't all 12s, you know, it was sevens, yeah. it was everything, it was... Sorry, I, th I think we got, yeah, so you answered that question. Um, uh, who else have we had on? We've had Flip Out and uh, oh. Nate coming soon. I mean, I, I, I'm testing you now. I'm testing you. Slee Stack's been on. He's right there in the chat. Uh, Cruz has been on in the chat. I mean, I can pull up. Uh, we have Vinyl Honey on in two weeks. Uh, 
general, it's pretty much most of the vinyl DJs that do hang out around this community have been on, at least the U.S. ones. Um, U.K. Yeah. ones, it's a little hard because it's really, really late in the night on a Monday. Um, but, uh, I mean, we're getting to the point where we're having doubles on, like people on for their second time. Panda that's in the chat has been on. Uh, yeah. Let me put we're going to make it work. We, we, we had a chat before the show. I mean, I think I'm going to I'm going to jump on at some point in the next sort of month or two. Um, yeah, uh, because it's, 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 it's definitely an addiction. I, I'm definitely quite addicted to it. Um, and I, we, you saw my daughter Zia earlier on and, and I played some of them to her and she, she quite enjoyed it. She thought it was quite cool. My wife, however, doesn't get it at all. She's like, doesn't why? Why are you playing it? It's really heavy. It doesn't sound right. And I'm like, OK, well, you know. <laughs> It's, it's it's for some people and for not other people. <laughs> the other truth of it is that a lot of these cultures and scenes that did start off with the slowed music were very drug influenced. It's the absolute yes. truth. Um, the northern Mexican cumbia scene was very much a narco scene. The Houston scene, same thing. Like the biggest known DJ of this died of a codeine overdose. Um, I mean, there's, it's, it's very much so a, we're changing music cause we're lit. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's not, <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing, but it's the truth, you know? It, it's not the sort of getting up in uh, peak time club music, is it? But it, it would work in like the second room, you know, there's a sort of chilled out second room where people are just going and, you know, slouching out. Uh, and and I guess that's that's part of the beauty of Twitch, isn't it? Because you can have any style and going on. And I think I think it was on Thirty Three Raiders. I think at one point there was your stream and Flip Outs. I think both of you were on at the same time playing Thirty Threes. I think uh, Forty Five to Thirty Three, which was which uh, you know it's bonkers, really. You know, there's more, more than one channel happening. But it, it, it's brilliant how it can happen. And, and and hopefully it will grow. You know, who knows? You know. Again, like I said, there's a few times I almost quit just because I was like, <laughs> all right, come on, how many, how often can I do this? But then I keep finding the new stuff and I keep finding the new people that want to do it. And it's it's more at this point become a community thing. Like, I, like I, yeah. I keep saying it's not something I ever did before Twitch. It's not something I've ever been obsessed with. But everything I do, I become very 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 researchy about it like uh, i just you know got through a chunk of a book just last night that spy hoppo was reading on his page it's just when i when i am very into learning and learning and learning and learning about stuff so um yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's i have no idea how we got here it's, it's, well, it's like you saying I, I i almost you know i can sort of join the dots from from sam and you and all the rest of it but you know this year for 45 day i did a, a, a normal Oh, normal at 45s and then i did a 33 mix you know i just put both out at the same time thinking you know see what happens um and you know i think one's had about 200 listens the other's had about 100 the, the 33 one i was like wow 100 people have listened to this and it was like something like 43 or something in the dub chart i was like that is insane you know the, the, the wrong speed <laughs> um and people are obviously getting into it but it, it's it's being creative with music using vinyl for a start and using the turntable as an instrument and and creating something completely different i mean like you know the ones you've played sound amazing i'm hoping it's you've got another contextualization one. yeah yeah uh, um let's let's do we've, we've probably got about a time for uh, for a couple more let's do let's do a couple more here's another fun one here's here's a fun one to slow down here's a this was like indian bubblegum pop that when slowed down turns into psychedelic Ooh. <laughs> Oh, 
my line When we say love We use the word God And when we want to say peace We say Shanti Hey Ram God of love Hey Shanti Ram God of peace I just like to think of it all as just recontextualizing. It's not even creating. I mean, it's just looking at it differently. You know? Yeah. It's... But again, that's that's brilliant. It, it's it's just the sounds, and, and it's almost it gives the record that space between that you hear sounds that you wouldn't hear when it's sort of, uh, you know, at normal, at normal speed. Yeah, um, you get to hear all the errors better. You get to hear everything that's, yeah. everything that's slightly like... off time is even more off time. It's... Yeah. Groove to says it sounds like the Mothra theme song. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's brilliant. But I mean, have you played this out? Have you have you done slow mo nights out? I um, since this has happened, um, there's the person that the you know did that little icon of me in the corner, and a very yeah. close friend of mine. Uh, has a retail retail store in town that I DJ at every day on Saturday, every every Saturday, and uh, we have, sometimes when it's a slow day or when we're you know there's not a lot of stuff to do, we we do this thing where I'll play music slow until someone notices. Yeah, we'll see how long it can go, and sometimes it's only ten minutes, but sometimes it's hours, and we can see people like wanting to say something, but we just do, <laughs> we keep doing it until someone says something. It's just it's more of a fun social experiment there just to see how long until someone is willing to say hey is this is there something wrong going on with the music or is, is, is your radio broken is am i hot like what is <laughs> this this is happening right you know and it, it but it, it, it is fun and, it, and it's it's cool just sort of uh i've done it a couple of times where i've literally just dropped in a couple at slow-mo just to see if anyone sort of noticed it and then like people like fat wax who, who know me quite well will know the song and and they'll say that, but then other times there's been, I can't remember which show it was on, but someone came in and said, "Is this like a remix of Madonna?" It was like Madonna slow down. And they're like, "Is this a remix?" I was like, "No, it's just it's just you know played at 33." And they're like, "Wow, it sounds so different, so cool." Um, me me and Sam are going to are going to Glastonbury um, next month, um, and we're going to be DJing at a bar we're both working on. And I and I'm, I haven't spoken to him about this yet. We're we're, we're doing a couple of shows uh, like this before we go, but. Uh, I think Glastonbury, sort of late, sort of three, four a.m., five a.m., could be quite perfect for dropping some thirty-three sets and just seeing what happens. Because it may be, I don't know, it might go really well, it might go really badly, but <laughs> I think it could be quite fun. I guess it depends on the uh, specific substances the people in the crowd are taking, <laughs> whether they want well, it to be faster or slower. Exactly. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be a festival, so people will be on whatever. Um, but <laughs> it'll be, it should be quite an interesting concert we, we're going to see if we can possibly stream from there but i, I don't know how that's going to work we'll see we'll see we might we might do before the punters turn up a couple of days before the punters turn up but uh we will see um have you got another one <laughs> sure maybe not a slowed down one but i got records i like i actually know this one's super fun slowed down also um i'm actually i need to finish it but i'm working on an edit at this song. <laughs> cool. Time warp, Eddie Grant. formula 
but to knowing if something will sound good. If you have a decently high BPM and high pitch vocals, there's a chance that it will work. This also reminds me, I know a drum and bass DJ in town that does break sets by playing all his drum and bass 12 inch 45s at 33. So there's another place where this is happening. Tried to dig it out before. Uh, there's a yeah. There's a there's a there's a, a drum and bass 45. Uh, I can't remember the label now that was sold. Um, but his promo on Instagram was like, here it is at 45, and then here it is at 33, and obviously showed that it was drum and bass and then breaks. You know, it's brilliant. Um, Cut class uh, made the point I think a little while ago that obviously if you get something that's about 110 BPM, that drops down to about 83 ish. Uh, which 26 percent yeah which is then sort of hip-hop isn't it you know that sort of hip-hop or slower hip-hop uh beat which, which fits quite well um yeah I've, I've done a little bit more sort of like rave music that ju just about works just about works but again it depends on the thing. and also obviously i think female vocals probably works better than the male vocals like you say high-pitched you know slightly high-pitched uh vocals to that but but it's all good it's all good um Right. I've been doing uh I've been doing every once in a while I've been doing a pop up I call it the twenty percent off house sale and it's just where I play house music at twenty percent or more slowed down and it all ends up sounding like a thievery corporation remix. Uh okay, so twenty percent of so one twenty, so yeah, so what just ninety four, ninety five, something like that? Around yeah, I guess. Something be, around, yeah, around that, yeah, yeah. 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 That's interesting. So it all ends up sounding like like a thievery corporation. Yeah. I don't know why it's hilarious. Everything, <laughs> but uh, so those are fun. So those many are more. really fun because so they're instrumental and there's not you know it's still relatively fast, so it doesn't ever get slothy, muddy, and sludgy. But yeah, slow yeah. house. That's been and I that's guess actually a lot of thing. I guess with house music, a lot of it is obviously probably been produced digitally as well. Um, so obviously the slower down isn't going to affect as much as perhaps more of the analog recordings. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, let us do one more, and then um, we'll, we might have to take it, close it off for part one, <laughs> and then we'll, okay. do, we'll do part two sometime later. Um, but yeah, let, let's let's do one more track. Cho choose one more, and then and then we'll find. Uh, while while you're doing that, I'll have a look and see who's on, and we'll we'll find someone to rate to. How about uh, one? I just I've got, I've got, I've got a, a, a an in real life friend who lives in my town actually who couldn't quite get onto the uh, he couldn't quite get onto Twitch because of the uh, tuning uh, the login stuff. He says that Indian record you played could almost be a dub with a, a Rasta chanting, which is a, a very good way of sort of describing it. Big up Massey Dread for that. Awesome. Yeah, how about one I bought just last week that I've been looking for for a really long time? It's just one of my favorite songs. Uh... Perfect. Should we listen to it at 45 or 33? I'll let you choose. <laughs> it sounds good either way. Uh, let's, do let's do 45. Let's do 45. All right, all right, all right. I haven't. Yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah. 
splash against my hollow bones That rocks my soul I'm black uh -huh. Somebody tell me What can I do Oh Lord Oh Something is holding me back uh -huh. Is it because I'm black However yeah. Let's hear it at 33 as well In this world Turns into a full on blues song. Yeah. Oh, no. uh. Uh. Mama, she works so hard to earn every penny. someone with like an amazing voice it just sounds amazing but yeah if you get someone that you get you get a rhythm section that's not tight you get a vocalist that's a little bit off those those flaws get magnified yeah. no, there's no auto tune on this so much for having me on though. thank you thank you for being on it's been a it's been a pleasure it's been uh an education I mean, and an people that watch my stream know that i have stopped myself from talking a lot of times so i, I like being given the, the opportunity <laughs> to ramble <laughs> I, I like i like giving people a chance to talk you know i mean i like to talk so it's nice to get people on uh <clears throat> here's a, a crazy idea do you think there's enough twitch djs out there to do 33 hours of 45s at 33 absolutely that was going to be our <clears throat> our year event was going to be 33 33 minute sets but um because we've had more than 33 guests but yeah i think that there's definitely definitely enough people <laughs> yeah because did... i mean half of them are in the chat right now i so. was gonna say there's probably there's probably enough watching this already um so i'm trying to think how much we did with a I think we did we five or six DJs for 33 Raiders, and then we ended up having some extras, didn't we? We, we went to Muchi Nochi, and then uh, Sleestack, yeah, we did. We maybe? Took it, we took it, yeah, we took it. We, uh, we, we just carried on, didn't we, for a little while. Who else um, was on that day? It was Muchi we had someone else. Fat, yeah. Fat Wax did a set, and Sam couldn't, so I think I might have done two sets. Chris International. I yes, did a set. that's who it was. Chris International, um, Muchi, and Slee. Yes, we all just kept kept it going for hours after you went to yeah. sleep <laughs> exactly yeah 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 okay well there you go the the, the seed has been planted uh if you want to play <laughs> on, on a 33 ray we'll, we'll find a date uh a day and a half and then and then we'll do it we'll do it yeah let's let's, let's join the slow mo and 45 day forces and create a big yeah. old ridiculous day thing let's do something more ridiculous i, I i'll <laughs> wait till my wife's away for the weekend or something and then she doesn't have to <laughs> listen to it all <laughs> right let, let, let me set the raid hold on you just check that's gone. Uh, we were talking about Brazilian DJs earlier on, so we're going to go and see DJ Tiago XA uh, yes, in Brazil. Yeah. Um, and as Twitch, which says sleep? Question mark. <laughs> me? Sometimes, sometimes we have to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but thank you so much. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for uh, for like I said, education, inspiration. You know, uh, really good, really good stuff. Um, if you want to watch this back, it will be on YouTube if you missed any. It will be on Mixcloud if you want to listen back. Uh, next week, next Monday, we've got 45 Raiders. But next Tuesday, we've got Cut Class coming on, uh, all back to mind. So we'll be talking hip-hop and Just Good Beats and BPM maths. And, and you know, maybe we'll play some stuff. I want to be speed. here for the BPM math. Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do stuff. But uh, 
Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for the sub, Kelly Anderson. Thank you for the bits. Thank you for the raid, uh, Northern Crates. Thank you for everyone for coming through. Uh, big up yourselves, uh, the big Twitch family. You know, one love to everyone. And uh, thank you for putting up for with our forty fives at the wrong speed. You know, it's <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> it's alternate, alternate, <laughs> alternate speed. Uh, the alternate not suggested speed. Yes, not uh, not suggested speed. <laughs> That's brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. All right, take it easy, guys. We are out in seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Show DJ Tiago some love when we get there. Right. <laughs>